the first celebrity chef was from Bristol um, and had a number of uh, restaurants in Bristol. And I suppose finally, um, Bristol has still got this big kind of wine presence and um, currently has the biggest bottling, wine bottling plant in Europe. So, wine is alcohol. You pick the grapes, you crush them, you drain off the juice and you add yeast. The yeast combines with the natural sugar in the wine and it starts to ferment, um, creating alcohol and carbon dioxide. But wine is so much more than just alcohol. Um, it's geology, it's geography, it's science, uh, it's engineering and it's personality. It's what the French call terroir, which literally means the environment in which the wine is made. Now, whilst it saddens me to say anything positive about the French, they are the best of wine. If you want to understand why, you need to understand France. So we're going to do a quick tour of, of, of France. We're going to focus on a bit of science as well, which is climate, okay? So the north of France is very cold, so the fruit doesn't ripen and it stays very acidic. As you go down through France, it gets hotter, and so you get more sugar in the fruit and you get more alcohol. We're going to start in Alsace. Alsace is the home of the great Riesling. Uh, Riesling tends to be very dry, very high in acidity. So it makes, it, it makes a, an awesome uh, aperitif. Hence the taste of uh, green fruit, green apples and citrus fruits like uh, lemon and lime. We're going to jump across the champagne next. Champagne is made from three grapes. White Chardonnay and then two red grapes, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Um, the colour of wine comes from the skin. The juice is completely clear. To make champagne, you first of all, you start with just a normal wine. You make a still wine, and then it goes under a, a secondary fermentation in the bottle. The interesting thing is that actually the UK makes some amazing champagne-style wines. The reason is that the climate is very similar in, um, in the South England, and these chalk soils from champagne run straight under the channel into like the Thames and Sussex. We're going to go south now into the Loire. The Loire Valley is the home of Sauvignon we drink a lot of Sauvignon Blanc from places in the New World, like New Zealand and Chile, but it all started off in uh, Sancerre and Puy-Fumé. The lesson in the Loire is about soil again. So the Loire is, is, is made up of limestone and it's made up of flint. And you can really taste the minerality in the wine, but particularly you can really taste the difference depending on where the grapes are grown. The second lesson of the Loire is about food matching. Now, the really important thing to think about when you're pairing food and wine is think about what they do in France, what they do locally. And in Loire, they match Sauvignon Blanc with gross cheese, and it makes for a fantastic combination. Burgundy. Burgundy is the home of Chardonnay. In the north of Burgundy, you've got Chablis, so it's unoaked, dry, um, and at high acidity. But as you go south, there's more, more, it's hotter, there's more sugar, and you get these fuller, uh, more fuller body Chardonnays, and they add oats, add even more richness. Louis Jadot is based in Burgundy. Louis Jadot is uh, probably one of the biggest and best wine producers in France. This is his brand new state-of-the-art winery, um, and it's really clever. Basically, it pumps grapes and juice up over um, concentric circles of, in the middle, uh, oak barrels, and then extending out uh, stainless steel fermentation tanks. The second grape of Burgundy is Pinot Noir, so we're moving into red now. Pinot Noir tends to be red fruit, red cherry and strawberries. And the, the thing here is all about age. So that vine is about 60 years old. And what it gives is very low yield, very high concentration of wine. If you drink Pinot Noir from the New World, it tends to be very light and very, very thin. We're going to go down to Bordeaux now. So Bordeaux on the left bank is the home of Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet is big. It's big black fruit, black currants, black breeze, a high tannin, full body. Makes a monster wine. So what they do on the right bank of Bordeaux is they plant Merlot. Merlot is much softer, it has more fruit, it's red plums and it's red cherries, and it adds the fruit to the blend. The interesting thing is that if you take Merlot into uh, the New World, places like Australia, where it's very hot, it, 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 gets, it gets overripe. You end up with a lot of sugar, a lot of alcohol, and an unpleasant jamminess in the flavour. So Turn is another little region of Bordeaux. Now you're not allowed to add sugar to wine to make it sweet. So what they do in Bordeaux is they leave the grapes on the vine well into autumn. So the mist comes down, um, they uh, get grey rot or botrytis, and they shrivel up like raisins. And you end up with this super sweet, super concentrated juice that makes the most luscious 
If you go in land now, uh, we've got the Rome. The Rome value of the home of Shira or Shiraz. Now, whilst it's on exactly the same latitude as Bordeaux, it's inland, so it's hotter. Um, and you, so you get slightly more alcohol, and you get flavours of black, free, and the spiciness of black pepper. We're going to drop down now finally into Provence. Provence is the home of rosé. Why? Because it's very hot in Provence, much like here. So a glass of really cold rosé works really well. The most important thing when uh, buying rosé is buy it young. Buy it young and buy it such that it's that it a colour that's sort of salmon pink, or even almost um, orangey. If you want to taste some wine or learn more about wine, I've just set up Pelican Wine Club. So we're going to do wine tastings and we're going to do wine events in Phnom Penh. Um, look at the website, it's fairly new, so it's, um, it's, it has a little on it, but have a look in, and hopefully we're going to start the first tasting week Thursday. I want to finish uh, with just something from sideways. So, so why I like wine? I like to think about the life of wine, how it's a living thing. I like to think about what was going on in the years of grapes were growing, how the sun was shining if it rained. I like to think about all the people who tended and picked the grapes. And if it's an old wine, how many of them must be dead by now? I like how wine continues to evolve. And if I opened a bottle of wine today, it would taste different than if I'd opened it on any other day. Because a bottle of wine is actually alive. And it's constantly evolving, and gaining complexity. That is, until it peaks. And then it begins its steady, inevitable decline. Thank you very much.